Dear Christians, on this feast of the Most Holy Rosary, we have in the Gospel the story of the Incarnation. The Blessed Virgin Mary's acceptance of the great role of pediatrics of all races. And I can see this is very fitting with the two feasts of this week. Today is the Most Holy Rosary, Saturday's Feast of Our Lady of Bath. For they all are all tied together in Our Lady's acceptance of her mission. Dear faithful, it's obvious the truths here, but we must reiterate them, not lest we forget, but lest we, just, we are distracted from their importance. <clears throat> For we know from Our Lady's example to hear the Word of God and keep it, pondering it in our heart, as she did. What is her relentless pleading in her apparitions? Cease offending God, who is already so much offended. And we need help in this endeavor, for we are weak humans. And so Our Lady has taken up her mission to dispense to us the graces we need. Dear faithful, we receive these graces only if we ask her and seek them. As our Lord said, Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So too it was an admoni admonition. If you do not seek, if you do not knock, it will not, not, will not be opened unto you. If you do not ask, it shall not be given to you. Dear faithful, our Lady's mission was none other than to give us these graces, to crush Satan's head out of our hearts, freeing us from his grasp. She does this through the rosary. Her mission is to be merciful and seek the good of all of her sons and daughters. That is, union with our Lord. That is our greatest good. She does this through the rosary. Her mission is to draw all people to her, that they may be gathered under her mantle, as chicks under their mother's wings, to be our protectors and guide, and guide us to Christ. She does these through the rosary. You see, to see Satan's hold on us, we need to be alert to grace. The daily recitation of the rosary awakens our hearts to what we truly desire. As we see in the mysteries, we desire to despise the material goods of this world, as Christ was born in a cave. Stable. And we seek to embrace virtue as he suffered for us. And so we desire truly to love and to love and to suffer our love. So too we desire to be in union with our Lord. So when we meditate on the mysteries of the rosary, they inspire us to imitate what they contain, that we may obtain what they promise. Let me read you something from St. Bernard. The Word was made flesh and dwells now among us. He dwells in our memory, he dwells in our thought, because he has condescended even unto the scope of our imagination. At what manner do you say? Truly, lying in the crib, resting in the virginal lap, preaching on the mountains, spending the night in prayer, hanging on the cross, becoming pallid in death, being freed from among the dead, and ruling in hell, and even rising on the third day, and showing the place of the nails, the signs of victory to the apostles, lastly, ascending before them to the mysteries of heaven. Which of these things cannot be considered truth, loving, holy? Dear faithful, these are the subjects of our rosary meditations. Bringing the life of Christ nearer to us as we become near, we come near to our Lady, who is there in all these scenes, who wishes to draw us close to our Lord. That is her true mission. That is how she crushes the head of the serpent. She draws us to our Lord. As we, we've gone over before, he is scoop in the Hebrew 
of, of the, the scripture of Genesis. The, the feminine pronoun with the masculine verb. He, she, she, he shall crush. It's through our lady that our Lord crushes the head of the serpent. She brings us to him. And we are united with him. And thus our lady seeks to draw us to our Lord through her. No matter how constant we are in this. How many times in life do we slack off in our prayers or neglect them? Or perform them hastily or distractedly? How many times, too, do we find ourselves off the path clearly marked and truly desired by us? Finding ourselves somewhere we don't want to be. So now we know our dependence on the grace of God. That we can't do this alone. Our battle is against powers and principalities. Spirits. This again brings up uh, the Ligurian uh, publication put out by the Redemptorist priest of St. Alphonsus Ligurian. There was an article in there reported to me by the late Mr. Piper Ernest, Walter Piper that we, even if you took all the greatest minds of the world, of all time, and put them into one man, they'd have no chance against the dumbest devil. And I always thought about it this way. Their spirits, they don't have brains. They're not limited by brain capacity. They don't know like we know. We have to gain our knowledge. Theirs is in huge. <coughs> So, we have no chance alone in this battle. And so again, as St. Bernard said, in all your troubles, go to Mary. Because she has great sway with our Lord. And so we need to seek grace. Grace bestowed by Mary only if we come to her as her needy children. So she draws us, showing how good a mother she is. That even though we only come to her in times of need, rather than in praise and thanksgiving, still she shows us that he that shall find me shall find life and shall have salvation from the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.